In today's video, we're going to test out a very old and valuable style mousetrap. I'll use my hand tools to show you step by step how to build them, and then we're going to test them out in the barn, and we'll feed the mice we catch to wild animals in the backyard. So stay tuned because this is a really good episode. Today for Mousetrap Monday, we're going to test out a very old style mousetrap known as a guillotine for good reason. Now this style of mousetrap was commonly used over 200 years ago and each one was handmade and unique. I already posted a video on this variation. It's different because it has jagged teeth and a spring coil. But in this video, we're gonna make another variation that's far more common. The first mousetrap we're gonna make is based off an original that's in the collection of the Smithsonian. And it's featured right here. This homemade mousetrap was found in a home in Amityville, New York, and donated to the Smithsonian Institution in 1891. Overall, it's a nice looking trap, the metal's kind of rusty, and the wood's a lighter color, so I'm gonna reproduce it from a block of oak. Now the second mouse trap we're gonna make is based off an original that's the only one I've ever seen for sale. It came up for auction on eBay last year. Now these things are so rare, I bid up to $450 on it, but someone else wanted it more. If it was in full working condition, I would have bid over $1,000 but it was missing two key components, including the spring that makes the trap work and a guard. So instead of spending all that money on a broken and incomplete trap, I thought it'd be better to make an exact copy based off the photos of the original. So let's go to the workshop and start building our two traps. The mouse trap on eBay was made out of a darker wood, so I'm gonna use black walnut. This is a big block of black walnut, but it doesn't look very good. The outside's kind of rotten, it's powdery, that's because it's been sitting in our barn for over 20 years. A couple decades ago, a man gave me this wood. Originally, he intended on making a rifle stock, but he never got around to it. So over the years, I've been cutting off pieces, doing different projects. The inside of the wood looks great. It's a dark chocolate. So we're gonna cut off a slab and make our mouse trap. For the mouse trap I'm making out of oak, I'll get a piece of firewood from the woodshed. But before I get started, I'm gonna try an experiment. Because we're making two different mouse traps, and because the originals were handmade, I'm gonna try two different methods. For the oak mouse trap, I'll use modern electric tools, but for the walnut trap, I'll use hand tools, such as this. You know what this is? This is called a brace and auger bit. It's great for drilling holes, but for the oak mouse trap, I'll use a cordless drill and force in bit. Plug your ears. Much faster. Same with the planers. This is a hand planer. I love seeing it when it takes off the shavings. This is much faster, an electric planer. So we're ready to get started. I'm gonna cut off a block of walnut, and to do that, I'm gonna use this bow saw. Look how big this is. So let's get started. Come here. Let's make a mouse trap.
Here's the completed wooden bodies of our mouse traps. That was a ton of work, but they sure turned out nice. The walnut's a dark chocolate color, and the oak has all this grain in it. It's hard to believe this started out as a piece of firewood. But now that the bodies are done, we have to make the metal components, including the guillotine blade, the guards, the trigger system, and the spring. We're gonna shift from woodworking to metalworking. Here's the components. I have a 3 16 metal bar. We're gonna hammer this out and make the guillotine blades. Also, we have some wire and some metal strapping. We're gonna cut and bend all the pieces, heat them up, hammer them out. So let's go back to the workshop and start working the metal. I finally completed all the components of our antique style mouse traps and we're now ready to put them together. This had 10 metal pieces and this one had 12. I had to custom build each piece except for a few items. Originally the guillotine blade was held down with a round headed screw so I got one of those. And to power the trap we have a mainspring. These are very strong and they're designed for setting off a hammer on a black powder rifle. But I found these smaller mainsprings that will fit our mouse traps perfectly. Now for the fun part. We'll take all the pieces and put everything together, just like this. I am so happy with how these turned out. Let me show you how they work. To set the trap, we first need to place bait on the trigger hook inside. Then we'll pull back the latch and lift up the bar. As we pull that up, you can see the spring flex, and that has quite a bit of downward force. Now we'll lift this up all the way and hook it in. We even have a groove on the blade to fit the latch, and we connect the back to the trigger. That holds it all secure, but it's still very sensitive. That way when the mouse enters, the slightest touch will set off the trap. These antique style mouse traps sure look good, but the question is, do they work? I'm gonna set them up in the barn with motion cameras and see if wild mice will enter, hit the trigger, and get caught. But I have to be very careful with what I show on YouTube, especially when it comes to a sharp metal blade slamming down on a mouse's neck. It might even act as a true guillotine. So I'm gonna place a toilet paper roll in front of the trap that way we can see the mouse enter, see the trap go off, and we won't show a bloody mess. So let's go set up the motion cameras and see what happens. Well, after watching the trail cameras, I learned a lot about these traps. There's a huge weakness. A mouse can go on top, hit the trigger, and set off the blade without getting caught. That's what happened with the first one. Then it went inside and got a free meal. But the second mouse wasn't as lucky. 
It went down there, pulled the trigger, and got the bar right on its neck. It worked very well, but it doesn't act as a true guillotine. It's more like a regular snap trap. Now one thing that drives me crazy is mice came back and started chewing on my trap right here. It has teeth marks. I worked so hard on this and they damaged it, but I guess that gives it character. And as you can see, they love to poop everywhere. They're really messy. Now I don't want the mouse we caught in this trap to go to waste, so I'm going to feed it to a wild animal. Let's go set up the motion cameras in the backyard and see what comes along and enjoys a guillotined mouse. Well, the skunk was the winner of our mouse dinner. I really enjoy making these antique style mouse traps. And even though they weren't perfect matches, they were close enough to test out and see how they worked. Thank you so much for watching. I've taken the last two weeks off to spend time with our new baby. I've really enjoyed this break slowing down, but it's time to start posting videos again. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider clicking the button right here. I've posted over 550 videos on YouTube and currently I'm posting new videos every Monday. So if you want to see the best videos on how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, stay tuned.